Okay, folks, this is part two. It's now in the morning of Obama caught staging terror attack. And that's exactly what it is to ship 30,000 guns into Mexico, knowing that it would intensify the mass murder down there. Now over, what, 30,000 deaths just in the last two years, two and a half years. And knowing that much of that death and carnage would then spill over into the United States. All so they could blame the Second Amendment and call for more gun control. And, of course, the backstory is it's a long-term program uh, that's been going on uh, through Los Zetas, trained by the U.S. military to go after the big mega banks drug cartel competition. On record, the big mega banks all laundering the money, even running the aircraft on record. And they pay a, what, a $100 million fine on 276, no, 376 billion, according to Bloomberg, that I showed you in the first video. And that's just two banks, Wells Fargo and Wachovia. Well, here is the latest uh, info, and Town Hall and others are reporting on it. Uh, Congressman Issa's office uh, grilling the head of the ATF, the ATF guy jumping ship and saying, don't blame me, the FBI, the DEA, it was all under Justice Department orders. Uh, the head of the Justice Department, uh, Eric Holder, is lying, perjuring himself. I mean, this is such a scandal. This is such a red-handed stage terror attack black op, destabilization, provocateur program, whatever you want to call it, it is stage terror. And it's what all these White House advisors talk about, about not letting a crisis go to waste or generating a crisis. And Bill Clinton saying that he owed his reelection in 96 to the Oklahoma City bombing and all these Obama advisors saying you need terror attacks. That'll really make folks love you and see you as their leader uh, and their protector. If you go back to, and then I'll get to some of the latest news. If you go back, in fact, let me just minimize this now um, to the next little piece. U.S. soldiers grow opium heroin poppies in Afghanistan. They've pulled most of these off YouTube, but it's uh, still available for now. Hopefully you'll go get this and uh, mirror it uh, everywhere. If you go back to mainline history, and I'm talking about mainline history here, ladies and gentlemen, it is on record that some of the richest families in the last 200 years in the United States, uh, the Roosevelt's uh, and others, the Forbes, ran the legal opium into the United States and had a monopoly to the British East India Company, but they were the importer office here in the U.S. Kind of like when you buy Corona beer, uh, it says Gambrinus Brothers of you know, New York bring it in, or San Antonio. It's the same thing. They are the U.S. importers. And... A lot of competition was coming in and breaking their monopoly by the early 30s, so they just got laws passed making it a felony, and then prices exploded. They could control the police, use the police to go after their competition. The rest is history. And that's what the drug war is. And it's been on record in Vietnam. They admit that the CIA uh, helped, uh, of course, ship in the heroin and get the troops addicted to it. And it's the same thing in Afghanistan. The real Taliban had cut opium production down to almost nothing. Um, it went from being about 10% of the world's opium supply in 2000, 2001, to now being 91 to 93, depending on which government report you see, of world opium supply out of Afghanistan. And the troops are told, help grow it, give them the fertilizer, help ship it out. Uh, we have to do this with the Taliban. Uh, we'll take back over. Uh, no, the Taliban are the folks, the real Taliban, not the CIA Taliban, not the decoy Taliban, are the ones that were shutting this down. Not saying they're good guys either. It's just, it's just a fact. It's on record. And so they just are apologists in our face. This is from over a year ago, back in October 2010, of saying, hey, you know, we grow the uh, opium. And you can go watch this here where they give all these excuses, but the troops admit they even provide the fertilizer and the security for it with the opium uh, supplies just exploding. And they call it tolerating. Yeah, going from 10% of the world opium supply uh, to uh, now over 90%, some estimates as high as 93% out of that one little country. And that's the main reason we're there for the big mega banks who are on record running the drugs. And then using all of this, I mean, it's bad enough they're doing this and getting the money off of it, but then using the drug war to take our liberties and our freedoms and bust down our doors. So this is, again, another form of stage terror, the whole phony drug war, shipping the drugs into the country, not just uh, getting the firearms out there so you can blame gun shows and gun shops and ban all semi-autos. And that's my final point. 
It came out in the Associated Press yesterday that Obama's going to announce soon his gun control initiative. Memos came out where they said it'd be under the radar, and that means restricting importation through the bureaucracy of foreign guns for legal sale in the U.S. Uh, they also are announcing they're going to, quote, strengthen the instant check, meaning it doesn't matter if you're not a felon. You're just going to be on, like, the no-fly, no-gun-buy list that former White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel has called for. And so now the – it's just like Congress wouldn't pass the new carbon taxes, so they just had the uh, EPA come out and start using it to shut down uh, companies that aren't part of General Electric that sits on the board of the White House Economic Council or actually heads it up. So it's all selectively enforced, just like with Obamacare, 2,000-plus mega companies are exempt from buying insurance. Uh, for their employees, but all their competition has to get it. It's all about unfair trade advantage, a fascistic command and control, the opposite of capitalism, crony collectivism that's known as crony capitalism, and a total fraud. So staging the drugs being shipped in, which is a form of terror, uh, making it illegal so there's huge amounts of money involved in it, so criminals get involved, making it too expensive so uh, addled addicts who are actually just victims we need to be rehabilitated, rob your house for the money, which then gets siphoned back to the mega banks. Please help us get the report that's at Infowars.com on all of this out to everyone to help get this video out. And yes, I know it's a bit shaky. I'm just doing this myself so the crew can have the weekend off. And I've bought a bunch of little tripods and things that I'm going to test out that are coming in next week where I'll try to do more professional shoots on these. But it doesn't matter. It's the info that's powerful. So please help us get this out to everyone. I'll do a big report on this Sunday, tomorrow, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Uh, that's 5 to 7 Eastern, what, 2 to 4 Pacific, 3 to 5 Mountain. And if you don't have an AM and FM station in your area, Infowars.com has the free streams. We've got to expose this, folks. I mean, this is a criminal government. And, of course, if they're shipping the drugs in and giving guns to the criminals to control you know, the major cartels and laundering the money, of course they're staging the terror, just like al-Qaeda was all CIA, admittedly, in the 80s and then used against the Serbs in the 90s and now attacking Gaddafi from the east with U.S. Special Forces helping al-Qaeda uh, in Libya. It's all on record, hidden in plain view. Break out of your trance. Foreign banks have taken over America and they wrap their tyranny in the American flag and they want our guns and they're trying to pass laws to shut down our farms and ranches with the... Uh, you know, safe food acts, uh, and, you know, all the rest of the garbage. It's all happening. Codex Alimentarius, you name it, it's all coming down. Wake up, warn everyone you know.